Would you please call the case? Yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Case number IT 0261I, the prosecutor versus Miroslav Dronjic. Thank you. May I have the appearances, please, for the prosecution? Good afternoon, Judge Liu. My name is Mark Harmon. Appearing with me is Camille Bibles, Mr. Mark Vlasic, and to my left, Susan Grogan, who is the case manager. Thank you. For the defense? My name is Hermann. I'm lawyer in Berlin. And here with Jelena Nikolic, together for the defendant. Thank you. We will proceed with the initial appearance of the accused. Miroslav Deronich, pursuant to Rule 62 of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence of the Tribunal. The indictment against Mr. Deronich was issued by the prosecutor on the 3rd of July, 2002, and confirmed the next day. On the 1st of July, 2002, arrest warrant was issued against the accused and then Mr. Deronich was transferred to the detention unit of the International Tribunal in The Hague on Monday, 8th of July, 2002. By the order of the President of the Tribunal, dated 9th July, 2002, this case was assigned to Trial Chamber 1, of which I am a member. Mr. Denrich, I'll ask you some questions. Would you please stand up? Can you hear the proceedings in a language that you understand? Da. Yes, I can. Would you please give me your full name or any nicknames? for the record. Miroslav. My name is Miroslav Deronic. I don't have a nickname. Thank you. What is the address at which you resided before you were arrested? Bratunac. Bratunets, Gavrila Principa Street, number 22. What are the date and the place of your birth, please? 66. I was born on the 6th of June, 1954, in Bratunets. See. Is your family and the embassy of your state informed about your arrest? as well as your transfer to the detention unit of the tribunal in The Hague? Or would you like the tribunal to notify any family members or the embassy? They were present when I was arrested. Thank you. You may sit down, please. Mr. Herman. Does your client receive the indictment in the language he could understand? My client received the indictment and he don't give any declaration today. He want to wait if he decide by himself if he give later on any declaration, but not today. I see. Did you have opportunity to discuss with, with your client about his I rights? I had opportunity, sufficient opportunity for beginning discussion, and I think for today it's enough, what we had on in, in discussion. I see. 
Did you discuss about the contents of that indictment with your client? Uh, we, we didn't discuss uh, the contents. We have generally decided uh, to plead not guilty today. You mean, you mean your client is ready to plead today? To plead uh, not guilty today. Yes. Thank you. And uh, did you discuss about uh, the rights of your client before this tribunal? We discussed, I hope, so. all these which are necessary for today. I think the discussion must be continued, but for today we are prepared. I see. I believe that it is important for your client to know the rights before this tribunal. So in this case, I'll ask Madame Registrar to read Article 20 and 21 to your client. Madame Registrar, you may read these two articles. Yes, Your Honor. Article 20. Commencement and conduct of trial proceedings. The trial chambers shall ensure that a trial is fair and expedi expeditious and that proceedings are conducted in accordance with the rules of procedure and evidence will f with full respect for the rights of the accused and due regard for the protection of victims and witnesses. A person against whom an indictment has been confirmed shall, pursuant to an order or an arrest warrant of the International Tribunal, be taken into custody, immediately informed of the charges against him and transferred to the International Tribunal. The trial chamber shall read the indictment, satisfy itself that the rights of the accused are respected, confirm that the accused understands the indictment, and instruct the accused to enter a plea. The trial chamber shall then set the date for trial. The hearing shall be public unless the trial chamber decides to close the proceedings in accordance with its rules of procedure and evidence. Article 21, rights of the accused. All persons shall be equal before the international tribunal. In the determination of charges against him, the accused shall be entitled to a fair and public hearing, subject to Article 22 of the statute. The accused shall be presumed innocent until proved guilty, according to the provisions of the present statute. In the determination of any charge against the accused, pursuant to the present statute, the accused shall be entitled to the following minimum guarantees in full equality. To be informed promptly and in detail in a language which he understands of the nature and cause of the charge against him. To have adequate time and facilities for the preparation of his defense and to communicate with counsel of his own choosing. To be tried without undue delay. To be tried in his presence and to defend himself in person or through legal assistance of his own choosing, to be informed, if he does not have legal assistance, of, his, of this right, and to have legal assistance assigned to him in any case where the interests of justice so require, and without payment by him in any such case if he does not have sufficient means to pay for it to examine or have examined the witnesses against him and to obtain the attendance and examination of witnesses on his behalf under the same conditions as witnesses against him. To have the free assistance of an interpreter if he cannot understand or speak the language used in the international tribunal. Not to be compelled to testify against himself or to confess guilt. Thank you. I notice that the indictment uh, contains a Schedule A with the name of 65 Bosnian Muslims who were uh, allegedly murdered in the village of Glogova on the 9th of May 1992. I suggest only the indictment without Schedule A is read out. 
Is that agreeable to both parties? It is with the prosecution. Thank you. Mr. Herman? Yes, we agree to. Thank you very much. Madam Registrar, would you please read out the indictment without Schedule A, please? Yes, Your Honor. Indictment. The Prosecutor of the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, pursuant to her authority under Article 18 of the Statute of the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, the Statute of the Tribunal, charges Miroslav Dudoncic with crimes against humanity and violations of the laws or customs of war as set forth below. The accused, Miroslav Doroncic, son of Milovan, was born on 6 June 1945 as per indictment, but 1954 as confirmed by the accused, in the municipality of Bratunac, Bosnia and Herzegovina. In 1992, during the conflict in Bosnia and Herzegovina, he was president of the Bratunac Municipal Board of the SDS, Serbian Democratic Party of Bosnia and Herzegovina. He was appointed member of the SDS Party Commission on Personal, Personnel and Organization by the Executive Board on 6 September 1991. Miroslav Doroncic was president of the Bratunac crisis staff in May 1992, a position that put him in effective control over the command and use of the territorial defense, TO, of the municipality of Bratunac on 9 May 1992. Individual criminal responsibility. During the 9 May 1992, attack on Glogova, Miroslav Doroncic was president of the crisis staff of the municipality of Bratunac, an area that includes the village of Glogova, and was in effective control of the command and use of the TO of the municipality of Bratunac. In this capacity, on 8, 8 May 1992, Miroslav Doroncic exercises exercised this effective control of the TO and gave the order to attack and burn the village of Glogova. Miroslav Doroncic is individually criminally responsible pursuant to Article 7.1 of the Statute of the Tribunal for the crimes referred to in Articles 3 and 5 of the Statute of the Tribunal as alleged in this indictment, which he planned, instigated, ordered, committed, or in whose planning, preparation, or execution he otherwise aided and abetted. Miroslav Doroncic is also criminally responsible, a superior, for the acts of his subordinates pursuant to Article 7.3 of the Tribunal Statute. This criminal responsibility is that of a, superior, of a superior for the acts of subordinates if he knew or had reason to know that his subordinates were about to commit such acts or had done so and he failed to take the necessary and reasonable measures to prevent such acts or to punish the perpetrators thereof. General Allegations At all times relevant to this indictment, a state of armed conflict existed in the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The acts or omissions described herein, the charged crimes against humanity in this indictment, were part of a widespread and systematic attack on the civilian population. Principally, the Bosnian Muslim population of Bratunac municipality in the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. On 9 May 1992, Miroslav Doroncic was required to abide by the laws and customs governing the conduct of armed conflicts. The general allegations contained in paragraph 5 through 7 are re-alleged 
and incorporated into each of the related counts of the indictment. Statement of the facts. The municipality of Bratunac is located in eastern Bos Bosnia and its Govina, and according to the 1991 census, had a population of 33,619, of which 21,535 were Muslims, 11,475 Serb, 223 Yugoslavs, 40 Croats, and 346 other nationalities. The municipality of Bratunac was of major significance to the Bosnian Serbs, as it was one of the municipalities within the strategic arc that the Serbs needed to link the Serbian populations of Bosnia and Govina to a contiguous Serbian state. In the spring of 1992, armed conflict between Serbs and non-Serbs broke out in the Republic of Bosnia and its Govina, including in the municipality of Bratunac. As part of the conflict, Bosnian Serb forces, Yugoslav People's Army forces, GNA, and paramilitary forces carried out widespread and systematic attacks on the civilian population of this region. The municipality of Bratunac was taken by Bosnian Serb forces on 17 April 1992, and a systematic effort was launched to disarm the Bosnian, Bosnian Muslim population of the municipality, which was completed by the end of April 1992. On 9 May 1992, Glogova was a small village located in the Bratunac municipality in the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina a few kilometers from the city of Bratunac. There were about 750 houses in Glogova, which was a predominantly Bosnian Muslim village. In 1991, the total population of the village was 1,913 residents, of whom 1,901 were Muslims, six Serbs, four Yugoslavs, one Croat, and one other. Here and after, for purpose of this indictment, the term Glogova refers to the Bosnian Muslim part of the village of Glogova. In late April and early May of 1992, the Bosnian Muslim villagers of Glogova were disarmed. On at least three occasions during that time frame, Bratunac police forces and the GNA went through Glogova and secured weapons from the Bosnian Muslim population. On one occasion, the Bosnian Muslim population was directed to appear at a meeting at the community building. Miroslav Dodonjic told the gathered villagers that they had to turn in their weapons. Over the next few days, soldiers gathered weapons from the Bosnian Muslim residents of Glogova. On the evening of 8 May 1992, Miroslav Dodonjic in this capacity as president of the Christ staff of the municipality of Bratunac, a position which gave him effective control over the command and use of the TO of the municipality of Bratunac, gave an order to attack the village of Glogova and burn it down. Charges. Count 1. Persecutions. In May 1992, Miroslav Dodonjic individually and in concert with members of the Bratunac TO were, who were under its effective control, planned, instigated, ordered, committed, or otherwise aided and abetted in the planning, preparation, or execution of the persecution of Bosnian Muslim, Muslims on political, racial, or religious grounds in the village of Glogova, in the municipality of Bratunac. In May 1992, Miroslav Dodonjic, acting in concert with members of the Bratunac TO, with members of the GNA, and with others, perpetrated persecutions in the following, following ways. Attack on the village of Glogova. On the evening of 8 May 1992, Miroslav Dodonjic, in his capacity as president of the crisis staff of the municipality of Bratunac, having effective control over the command and use of the TO of the municipality of Bratunac, gave the order to the Bratunac TO 
to attack and burn the village of Glogova. In the early morning hours of 9 May 1992, members of the Bracina TO and members of the GNA and others here and after attacking forces or forces refers to the Bratuna Chio, the GNA and others, working in concert surrounded the village of Glogova and initially bombarded it with alt artillery. Thereafter, the attacking forces entered the village on foot and took control of the village. The Bosnian Muslim villagers, who previously had been disarmed, offered no resistance. The attacking forces then set fire to Bosnian Muslim houses, buildings, and the mosque. The Bosnian Muslim portion of the village of Glogova was razed to the ground. Miro Miroslav Dodonjic was present during the attack on Glogova. Killing of Muslim villagers from Glogova. During the 9th May 1992, attack on Glogova members of the Bratunak TO, including Nijan Mladenovic, Milo, also known River, Milan Zaric, Gojko Radic, Drago Takic, Dujan Zivanovic, also known Dul, participated in the attack on Glogova. Bosnian Muslim villagers, Medo Delic, Cech Checho Ibijevic, his wife Slatija, and Adam Yunuzovic were shot and killed outside their homes by members of the attacking forces. During the course of the attack, other Bosnian Mul Muslim men were executed in a similar manner near their homes by members of the attacking forces. During the attack, members of the attacking forces executed a group of approximately 15 Bosnian Muslim men from the village of Glogova on the main road near the center of the village. After the execution of the group of Bosnian Muslim re Muslims referred to in paragraph 22, members of the attacking forces ordered approximately 15 Bosnian Muslim villagers to carry these and other bodies to the river. Miroslav Dronjic was present near the river bank when Bosnian Muslim bodies were dumped. At this location, a member of the attacking forces executed a Bosnian Muslim villager, Yusuf Ibizivic, in the immediate presence of Miroslav Dronjic. After all of the bodies were dumped into the river, those Mos Bosnian Muslim villagers who had been ordered to carry the bodies were lined up by the river and executed. During the attack on Glogova, members of the attacking forces gathered a group of approximately 20 Bosnian Muslim men by the market in Glogova. These Bosnian Muslim men were ordered to walk to the river where they were executed by members of the attacking forces on the order of Naiden Mlajenovic, a member of the Bratunac TO and a subordinate of Miroslav Dronjic. Over 60 Bosnian Muslim men from Glogova were executed during May 9, 1992 attack. The murdered individuals include, but are not limited to, those listed in Schedule A, which is attached and incorporated with this indictment. Destruction of property in the village of Glogova. During the 9 May 1992 attack on Glogova, the attacking forces bombarded Glogova with heavy artillery shells and set fire to the mosque, to homes, warehouses, businesses, fields and haystacks as described herein. Miroslav Dronjic was present during the attack on Glogova while members of the attacking forces wantonly destroyed Bosnian Muslim homes, businesses, institutions dedicated to the religion, and personal property in the manner described in paragraph 26. Glogova was razed to the ground. Forcible transfer of civilians from Glogova. In May 1992, Miroslav Dronjic aided and abetted in the forcible expulsion of 
and transfer of the surviving Bosnian Muslims of Glogova from the municipality of Bratunac. On May 9, 1992, during and immediately after the attack on Glogova, Bosnian Muslim civilians were expelled from their homes and forcibly transferred by subordinates of Miroslav Didonjic, that is, members of the Bratunatio, from the village of Glogova to other parts of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Specifically, the women and children who survived the attack were placed on buses and forcibly transported to Muslim-held territory located outside the municipality of Bratunac. The surviving Bosnian Muslim men were transported to various locations in Bratunac, including the Bratunac Stadium and the Vak Karadzic School. The persecutions of Bosnian Muslim civilians, as alleged above, resulted in the elimination of the Bosnian Muslim population from Glogova and resulted in the destruction of the village. Miroslav Dodonjic knew, or had reason to know, that members of the Bratunat Tio were persecuting Mos Bosnian Muslims on political, racial or religious grounds in the village of Glogova and in the manner described herein, or had done so and failed to take the necessary and reasonable measures to prevent such acts or to punish the perpetrators thereof. By these acts and omissions, Miroslav Dronjic committed Count 1. Persecutions, a crime against humanity, punishable under Articles 5H, 7.1 and 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Counts 2-3. to three. Murder. On 9th May 1992, in the municipality of Bratunac, the Republic of Bosnia Herzegovina, Miroslav Dronjic, acting in concert with others who shared his intent, planned, instigated, ordered, committed, or otherwise aided and abetted the planning, preparation, or execution of the attack on the village of Glogova, including the killing of over 60 Muslim civilians. On 8 May 1992, Miroslav Dronjic, in this capacity as president of the crisis staff of the municipality of Bratunac, gave the order to attack and burn the village of Glogova. On 9 May 1992, the village of Glogova was attacked. Members of the attacking forces ordered Bosnian Muslim villagers out of their homes. Some Bosnian Muslim men were killed as they left their homes while the remaining Bosnian Muslim villagers were directed to certain areas of the village. At these locations, Bosnian Muslim men were separated from women and children and some of the men were summarily executed. During the attack on Glogova, members of the Bratunac Tio, including Naiden Mlajenovic, Milo, also known Riva, Milan Zaric, Gojko Radic, Drago Takic, Duzan Zivanovic, also known Dul, participated in the attack of Glogova. Bosnian Muslim villages of Glogova, Medodelic, Cekcho Izbizevic, his wife Slatia, and Adam Yunuzovic were shot and killed outside their homes by members of the attacking forces. During the course of the attack, other Bosnian Muslim men were executed in a similar manner near their homes. During the attack in Glogova, members of the attacking forces executed a group of approximately 15 Bosnian Muslim men on the main road near the center of the village. After the execution of the group of Bosnian Muslim referred to in paragraph 37, members of the attacking forces ordered approximately 15 Muslim villagers to carry these and other bodies to the river. Miroslav Dronjic was present near the riverbank where Bosnian Muslim bodies were dumped. A member of the attacking forces executed a Bosnian Muslim villager, Yusuf Ibizivic, in the immediate presence of Miroslav Dronjic. After all of the bodies were dumped into the river, those Bosnian Muslim villagers who had been ordered to carry the bodies 
were executed. During the attack on Glogova, members of the attacking forces gathered a group of approximately 20 Bosnian Muslim men by the market in the village of Glogova. These Bosnian Muslim men were ordered to walk to the river where they were executed by members of the attacking forces on the order of Naiden Mladenovic, a member of the Bratunac Tio and a subordinate of Miroslav Dronjic. Over 60 Bosnian Muslim men from Glogova were executed during the 9 May 1992 attack the individuals murdered include, but are not limited to, those listed in Schedule A, which is attached and incorporated with this indictment. By these acts or omission, omissions, Miroslav Doroncic committed. Count 2. Murder. A crime against humanity, punishable under Articles 5A, 7.1 and 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. And Count 3. Murder, a violation of the laws or customs of war, as recognized by Article 31A of the Geneva Conventions of 1949, punishable under Articles 3, 7 1, and 7 3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Counts 4 to 6. Wanton destruction of cities, towns or villages, destruction of institutions dedicated to religion, attack of an undefended village. On 9 May 1992, in the municipality of Bratunac, the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Miroslav Dronjic, acting individually and in concert with others who shared his intent, planned, instigated, ordered, committed, or otherwise aided and abetted the planning, preparation or execution of an attack on Glogova, an undefended village, and the wanton and dis extensive destruction of the Bosnian Muslim dwellings, businesses, institutions dedicated to religion and personal property in the village of Glogova. In late April and early May 1992, the Bosnian Muslim residents of Glogova surrendered their arms to Bratunac police forces and to the GN JNA, as described in paragraph 14, and on 9 May 1992 offered no resistance to the attacking forces. On 9 May 1992, Glogova was attacked. Members of the attacking forces shelled the village of Glogova and set fire to the mosque and to Bosnian Muslim homes warehouses, businesses, fields and haystacks. At the end of the attack, Glogova was razed to the ground. Miroslav Dronjic, in his capacity as president of the crisis staff of the municipality of Bratunac, a position which gave him effective control over the command and use of the TO of the municipality of Bratunac, gave the order to attack Glogova. Miroslav Dronjic was present during the attack as the village was razed to the ground. By these acts or omissions, Miroslav Dronjic committed Count 4, wanton destruction of cities, towns or villages, a violation of the laws or customs of war, punishable under Articles 3b, 7.1 and 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Count 5, destruction of institutions dedicated to religion, a violation of the laws or customs of war, punish, punishable under Articles 3D, 7.1 and 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Count 6, attack of an undefended village, a violation of the laws and customs of war, punishable under Articles 3C, 7.1 and 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal dated the third day of July 2002. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Registrar. Ms. Dirantic. I will now shortly repeat the individual charges brought against you. And I will then ask you whether you plead guilty or not guilty to the specific charges. Your answer in each case should be guilty or not guilty, as the case may be. Is that clear to you?
Yes. Would you please stand up, please? Count one. Charges you in persecutions being a crime against the humanity. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Okay. Not guilty. Count two. Charges you with murder being a crime against the humanity. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Count three charges you with murder as a violation of laws and the customers of war. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Count four charges you with wanton destruction of cities, towns, and villages as a violation of the laws of customers of war. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Count five charges you with destruction of institutions dedicated to religion as a violation of the laws and the customers of war. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Count six charges you with the attack of an undefended village as a violation of the laws and the customers of war. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Thank you, sir. You may sit down, please. May the registrar please take note that Ms. Dirantic has pleaded not guilty to all the counts of the indictment. The registrar will be instructed to fix a date for trial when appropriate. The accused is remain in custody until further order. He may, however, file a motion on provisional release pursuant to Rule 65 of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence of the Tribunal after consultation with his counsel. The defense is advised that it will have 30 days period for filing any preliminary motions once it has received all the supporting material in accordance with Rule 66 of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence. Mr. Herman, are you representing Mr. Dirondic only in this hearing or also afterwards? I think I Your mic, please. Microphone, please. Yes. Excuse me, Anna. Uh, I will represent uh, the accused in the following case. Well, in any case, you should be available for consultation in respect of any preliminary motions of the accused until a permanent defense counsel has been assigned. Thank you. Is there any other matters that defense wishes to raise at this stage? Your Honor, if you give us a possibility, we would uh, give a declaration in a closed session by reasons of Rule 79 a number three of the interest of the justice. It de uh, depends uh, in the manner of the arrested with that accused. Any response from the prosecution? Mr. Harmon? I have no objection. I'm just consulting with Rule 79 cited by counsel. I have no objection to a session as uh, requested by my colleague from the defense. Well, Mr. Herman, 
Generally speaking, all the hearings should be conducted in the open session unless there are some protective measures or state secrets which should be confined in this courtroom. So you are still insist for the application of a closed session? I would like, if it is possible, to have a closed session uh, to bring to the court some po uh, points, in, as I said, uh, connecting the uh, arrest conditions and circumstances. Yes, we'll hear the uh, complaints made by you or by, your, by the accused through you on this very issue. And I also have to remind you that later on, you have the full opportunity to submit the written submissions to this trial chamber. But anyway, we'll hear briefly about what you are going to inform us. And your motion for the closed session is granted. We'll go to closed session. Now I would like to turn to the prosecution. I also like to remind the prosecution that, pursuant to Rule 66 of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence, it has 30 days to disclose all the supporting material with the indictment. Mr. Harmon, can you indicate to defense when you'll be able to fulfill your disclosure obligation? Your Honor, I was before the proceedings started, I had at hand the materials, the supporting materials for the indictment which I offered to my colleagues from the defense. I was informed by them that they are temporary counsel for purposes of this hearing only, and they preferred that I wait until permanent counsel has been assigned. So I am unclear, given Mr. Herman's answer to your question, whether he intends to be permanent counsel in the defense of Mr. Jeronich, or he is only temporary counsel. In any event, for the record, Judge Liu, we have those materials here today. We're prepared to disclose them to counsel, or alternatively, prepared to give them to the defendant himself. Thank you very much. Are, they, are those materials translated into the language that the accused understands? They are. Thank you very much. Is there any other matters that you would like to bring up at this stage? No, other than the clarification on whether Mr. Herman is the counsel and will be the permanent counsel. See, thank you. In furtherance of uh, expeditious administration of the case, the trial chamber has decided to assign Honorable Judge Muhammad Al Mandi as the pretrial judge for these proceedings. The pretrial judge will schedule a state conference within 120 days from today, pursuant to Rule 65BA of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence, to facilitate the preparation of the trial. We will now adjourn the proceedings. All rise for your vote.